Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia, but as always you can call me Crafty Al. While today's video is a crafty one, it's not my usual card making video. Instead, we are going to unbox and try out the HTV Rant Auto Heat Press. I hope you'll stick around, find out what's in this box, and see how I'm going to change this plain black apron into something fun and crafty. As my channel continues to grow, thank you to all of you out there who keep watching, liking, commenting, and sharing, I get offers from companies to do collaborations. Now many times these are an easy no because they're nothing related to crafting, and sometimes with the crafty ones I find that the company isn't reputable or maybe I don't like the product, I really want to bring you stuff that I want to share. Well, when HTV Rot reached out, I was already interested because I have been looking for a heat press for myself ever since I got my Cricut heat press. So I went to their site, I did some research, read some reviews, watched some YouTube videos, and after all of that, I agreed that I would love to try out their product. I did ask though if I could do an honest review, and I was told that yes, I could. You can see here that right out of the box, after I powered it on, I was already impressed. The HTV Ron Auto Heat Press features a 15 inch square pull out platform. Now I wanted to take that mat off and see how it compared to my Easy Press, and it is a good three inches both ways. I do know that there is a larger version now, but it came out shortly after I bought mine and I wasn't ready to pay for an upgrade at that time. Even before HTV Rant reached out to me, I had a project in mind that I wanted to create that was going to take four colors of vinyl. So when they offered to send me some of their vinyl, which I didn't even know they sold that as well, but they do have glitter and standard and holographic and patterned, so many different options on their site, I didn't want to be too greedy. So I was like, you know what, my design has four colors, but if you just want to send me the glitter, I'll use my own white. Well, they graciously sent me the most beautiful pink, purple, and blue glitter HTV, and then also a large roll of white. Inside each box was a secured roll of vinyl and a little instruction card, which you'll definitely want to hang on to that. Now, some of the boxes were a little bit beat up in shipping, but because of their packaging, the entire roll looked great. I had already designed my artwork in Illustrator and turned it into an SVG. I will be doing the Let's Get Crafty in the white HTV and then the little paint splatters in their corresponding glitter HTV. Now I am not a pro at all. I wouldn't even say I'm a little bit advanced at cutting and layering designs with all of these colors. Usually when I make a shirt or a bag or something, it's maybe one or two colors and easy. But what I did, I sent everything separately to my silhouette. Now what I really loved about the vinyl is it gave me specific instructions for, you know, my pressure, my blade depth, my passes. And I will say at first, for both the regular vinyl and the glitter vinyl, it told me to have two passes. And I am not usually a two pass person, I want to get it done and over with. So I was a little skeptical about that. But I did go ahead and use their specifications and set up some custom materials in my Silhouette software. And I have to tell you, it did actually cut very nicely. So I will definitely use the ones they provide in the future. Now the only issue with the custom material that I entered, and this was not HTV Ron's issue at all, is normally when I would send something with HTV, Silhouette asked me if I want to mirror it. But I couldn't figure that out, so I actually had to go in and manually mirror the image. Let me know in that comment section below if you know how to like, make a new material or a custom material so it automatically asks you, do you want to mirror this? 
although their settings did cut the vinyl perfectly, on the white vinyl, I did find it a little bit tougher to weed um, than the material I'm used to, but it definitely, all of it came off. I didn't pull off any dots or any little pieces. I would just say it was a little bit stickier. Once I had the white vinyl weeded, I did flip my little piece over there and make sure it read okay, and then I got off all the excess. And then I worked on getting the glitter vinyls done. Now again, if you're a pro at doing this layering, avert your eyes. I ended up just doing the pink and purple at one time and I cut pieces of vinyl that I think were seven by six inches. I couldn't seem to figure out how to get it all work on one mat but again their settings when I made that custom material did cut perfectly. I just had to mirror myself in the software. After I got both pieces of my glitter vinyl cut down to size, I got them put on my silhouette mat. And don't forget, at this point, you need to make sure the carrier side is what is on the mat. In this case, the glitter side goes down. Now, full disclosure, I sent this over to my silhouette and had it cut. But unfortunately, I was a little bit rushed. I was excited to get this apron done and I did not give my vinyl time to flatten out. So the first cut, it started peeling up from the mat and I did have to stop it and try again. But all I did was I reverse rolled it, I put some paper clips on there and then I just went to lunch. So about 30 minutes, I rolled it up the other way and then I got it put back in my sheen and it cut perfectly. And I will tell you that when I went to weed this glitter, it was so much easier. It peeled right off. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on screen, but there are some teeny tiny pieces that needed to be left on there. And they came off perfectly. I didn't have to worry about them lifting up as I weeded my glitter. I cut and weeded my final paint splatter, which was in the most beautiful blue glitter. This is probably my favorite color ever. And then I started layering these pieces together. Now, normally I would have just taken the sentiment, found the center point and put it on the front of my apron. But because I had all of the paint splatters around the text, I needed to make sure that with all of those on there, that it would be aligned and kind of centered in the area. So I put this on top of my cutting mat which has that carrier sheet so I will be able to pull it up later once I have everything arranged. I did my best to kind of eyeball it making sure all the borders looked good and then I brought in my apron and got it placed centered in that top area where I wanted the image. Once it was centered I removed those top three layers or the glitter vinyl leaving just the sentiment and then it was time to go over and start using the new HTV Ron auto heat press. For these pressings, I went kind of mid temperature and mid time of what the instruction sheet told me because I will be pressing each layer multiple times since there are so many colors and pieces. While we wait for the machine to heat up, which it probably took four or five minutes to get to the correct temperature, I thought I would tell you some more about the machine. It is called an auto heat press because it automatically figures out the pressure that you need for the material that you're using or the thickness. Now I know when I would use my easy press that I would never know how hard I should push it down or if I kept an even pressure or if I was pushing too hard or not enough. So with this, when you pull out that tray and push it in and start it, it automatically detects what it needs. Speaking of that pull out tray, one of the things that I loved about this is that the tray does pull out and you don't have to lift up the top of it, you know, with the handle and then lock it into place. For me, this means that I can put it on a smaller area because I didn't need room in the back for the mechanism for it to move up and down. There is a little manual that comes with the machine and it discusses what each of the buttons are and how to use them. It goes over some safety precautions and even a little bit of troubleshooting. But I did want to point out a few things. So on the panel here, you have the power button. You have the temperature button that you will use in conjunction with the plus and minus. This goes from 210 degrees Fahrenheit up to 410 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you're a Celsius user, you can change it to Celsius as well. 
you have your timer button, which again, you use a plus and minus, and this goes up in increments of one second. And then at the bottom are three buttons that have some presets, both ones that come pre-programmed, and with the middle button, you can make your own presets. And then when you're ready to press, you're gonna use that R button over there on the right. Once the machine was all heated up, it was ready to try out that first round of HTV. Now I could have put my apron in neck strap first, but I was being a little extra cautious since I know this thing gets hot, so I did turn it to the side. Now before you press it, you always want to make sure that you put that Teflon sheet on top, and then you just use the handle push the drawer into the machine and press that R button. And I just love how it's like a little robot. It presses down, counts down the timer and opens back up when it is ready. According to the instructions on the vinyl, this did need to be a cold peel. So I removed my apron from the platform and set it to the side for a minute or two to let that cool down. Now, even though I went midway on the time and temperature for the vinyl, I was able to remove the carrier sheet and my let's get crafty stayed right on the front of the apron. Next, I brought in my blue glittery paint splatter and took some time to get that aligned around the bottom right of Let's Get Crafty. Once I had it in place, I repeated the same steps as with the white vinyl. I did forget to mention I did change the heat and time just a little bit between these two. But once that was warmed back up, I got my apron with the Teflon sheet on the platform and my little robot did its job. Once again, this was a cold peel, so I set my apron to the side for just a couple minutes before I removed the carrier sheet. And I have to tell you, the sparkle and shine on this glitter HTV was just amazing. Like, I think I might have oohed out loud when I saw that. So even if you're not in the market for something like the auto heat press, definitely check them out for your vinyl needs as well. They have regular vinyl, HTV, and they even have some like printable vinyl and labels so I will have links in the description box below for you to check it out and even though they are affiliate links they don't cost you anything extra but I might make a little bit to keep creating here on YouTube I continued putting on my glittery paint splatters and one other thing I want to tell you I love about this is the drawer that pulls out now you might think "Ooh, is that gonna tip off your counter but it is not the base, this whole machine is just so sturdy. And they say on their website it only weighs 38 pounds, but I'm gonna tell you that is a heavy 38 pounds. So I didn't have any fear at all that that drawer was ever gonna make this tip off the counter. Once I had all four pieces of vinyl on my apron, I did go ahead and press it one more time with just the Teflon sheet at the top. I just wanted to make sure everything was nice and sealed in place on that apron. And here's a close up look at the sparkle. I have to tell you, I am seriously amazed. Like I wanna make this into a sweatshirt. I wanna make it into a t-shirt. I want to wear this thing every day. Overall, I loved using the HTV Ron Auto Heat Press and their vinyl. I actually can't wait to place my own order for more material. Well, I am loving my new sparkly apron and I cannot wait to get crafty in it. Thank you to HTV Ron for sending me the Auto Heat Press to try out. I thoroughly enjoyed it. For my very first time out of the box, I thought it was super easy to use and I love the results. I already know what my next project is going to be. I recently found some t-shirt transfers in my house, so I'm going to see about printing onto those and seeing how the heat press does with that. If you want to see that video or any of my other card making videos and you're not already subscribed, click on that button below this video and don't forget to ring that bell for notifications. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Here's a little behind the scenes peek for you. I wanted it to look like it was all boxed up in the beginning, but the fun fact, I already had help the previous night getting it onto this counter. Like I mentioned earlier, it is heavy duty. So all I did was I sealed the top of the box shut again, and I pushed in all of the flaps on the bottom of the box, and all I had to do was lift it right up, and then I could tell you all about the auto heat press.
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.